Mi mi mi, no ma ma ma, la 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 la. Awesome. <laughs> Hey and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news leading towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. High 45. <laughs> High 45. High 45. Yeah, yeah. We've worked into a pattern. I think it's pretty cool. We've got a lot of cool stuff this week. Yep. Say that uh, every week. I've got to work on something new. <laughs> Google has been uh, driving robotic cars. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, rat brains are controlling robots. Uh, how would you describe this? Uh, monitoring your organs with your phone? <laughs> awesome. Uh, and uh, cute little teddy bears are going to kill us. Well, they're not, but they're cool. Yeah, they're evil. Uh, singularity topic, what's that for this week? Toys and gadgets. Toys Besides and gadgets? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what toys um, will 10 year olds in the future be having? Because you yeah. can see a progression, so interesting to think about. Indeed. Hmm. Um, yeah, the, the biggest news this week, I guess, is the. Um, Google has actually had a team of, I think, like seven different, no, 15 engineers working on a robotic car project. That's awesome. And they've actually, story. and the crazy thing is, they've already logged 140,000 miles on real roads, like in real traffic, mm. using cars that drive themselves. They've done like, it. Like, like this, this is going to take a long time before it goes, you know, into commercial reality and cars start driving themselves, obviously, like... 10 years type thing. Yeah. But um, this is pretty crazy that um, they've got all these like top-notch engineers who have worked on previous DARPA projects. Like DARPA had a, a challenge. Oh, the robotic challenge. Like, yeah. Like, driving around same, and same guys, autonomous stuff. Same guys that won the Stanford experiment are working on this. See, they, they need to put that into the competition and stuff. Uh, that'd be yeah. cool. See how they go. And what these guys have done, they've actually, they've literally just had the cars drive themselves. It's got a camera and laser finders with, and, and different sensors to work it out. Mm -hmm. They've just got one guy in the back sitting watching all the metrics and all the data come through. Right. And another guy at the wheel, but just in case, you know, something yeah, goes wrong. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to get 140,000 miles without someone just saying, yeah, yeah, okay, it's veering towards <laughs> that old lady. And there's yeah. some really cool videos. And apparently, um, you know, uh, Robert Scoble, mm. he's a big tech blogger. He apparently uh, videotaped one of the cars like months back, back in January, but didn't, ah. had no idea what it was. Yeah, yeah, right. Really. It's been a stealth project for a long time. It's just suddenly I love that they up. did that. Rather than announcing they're about to do this thing, they actually yeah. did it. First, I mean, more people should do that. Actually, yeah, awesome. do the thing rather than speak about it. Then they'd stop getting people like us actually saying, "Wow, this is amazing!" Without any results. Yeah. Obviously, now there's results. I can say, "Yes, <laughs> that is cool." Like Google Wave. Yeah, like Google Wave. <laughs> we were predicting so many good things for it, but just no market. <laughs> no, yeah. this is cool. This is awesome. This, it's massive. I, I, I feel that it's massive. I don't know. Do you think it's massive? No. <laughs> Uh, it's massive in the sense that it's just they've been doing it on real world roads. Yeah. That's really all it is. Because the DARPA challenge, like, they've, they've done this. The DARPA challenge was um, the car had to drive, like, a ridiculous amount of miles through mm. a, a desert. But apparently, actually, I did read another thing saying that um, they don't actually log it. Like, they, they still have the sensors, like, they stop when a car's in front of them and they do all that stuff. But there's a car that goes in front first to actually monitor, to actually map out where they're going. Oh, okay. So That's... it's not. It's not Com completely same, autonomous. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. see, you would think they'd just integrate with Google Maps and say, I want to go here. It does the whole Google directions yeah. thing and says, let's go on that. Probably one. it's not real time though. That's the problem. Yeah. So it, it's it's cool that they're working on it. It just shows that Google's like working on like everything. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, they've got the money. They're just like, this is a cool idea. Let's just do this. Let's do it. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, my one, uh, I'll talk about the robot with a rat brain. This is from Singularity Hub. A lot of stuff from Singularity Hub. Both my stories are from Singularity Hub. Like, I, I saw, them, saw them around we need more else online. They're a good site. Well, yeah, Singularity Hub's great. I, I, I saw them around at other places online, but yeah, Singularity Hub, nice, easy thing right there. We've seen some videos and stuff. <laughs> um, this one's about, uh, yeah, a robot-controlled rat brain. Now, what, what happens is that there's like a little like plate, and they put rat neurons in it. And then they let the neurons like all form connections and stuff. Then they put electrodes in as well. And then the rat neurons form connections with the electrodes and stuff. They connect right. the electrodes wirelessly to a robot. And the ro what they've done so far is they've got predictable responses from the rat neurons like uh, through the robot, say, approaching walls with ultrasound. And so as it's approaching the wall, the rat neurons like actually produce some response because they're like, you know, through electrical resistance or however the hell rat neuron works. Yeah. And um, yeah, it actually stops it from running into the wall. So there's this fantastic video of this robot not running into walls. No logic circuits, not none of that. It's totally controlled by rat neurons. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a, a rat. It's a rat brain powered robot with just rat neurons. Not an actual like rat brain. So like wondered, did, did they have to train <laughs> it somehow? Like I don't know. Probably because are, are all neurons the same or they're all the same? But the, they... the the network is different. They all have to network together and work right. it. So what happens with the electrodes going in, they would connect with it and then they'd network around it and stuff. And on my limited understanding of how like neurons and brains work, it's all about the networking. That's how it goes. So they'd connect to okay. it and then when that electrode produced a certain response, it would flow through the network and provide a response back. But uh, this is just really cool. Like I'm not sure how much you could scale this up. Like it seems pretty basic, but just the very fact that there's little robots running around that don't aren't powered by like a little chip. I mean, this chip could you could easily do yeah, this, this easily this, do this like, like normally. But this is powered by organic. Rat yeah, like neurons. no no self directed programming. No. It's no. just put in there and uh, rat neurons. <laughs> rat neurons controlled by a <laughs> controlling a robot. Like this is cool. Like if. If this could be scaled up, if they could find ways to do it, they use 300,000 rat neurons, which uh, apparently is a lot, but uh, that's not a, that, uh, not a lot of them were actually used within it. Like, there's tons yeah. of neurons that weren't used within it. If they could actually refine this and go well, like, if you could actually have organic brains going there, like, why not put, like, a billion neurons or a trillion or, like, even more? All controlling certain responses and you just train the brain organically. You have giant bats. Rat like a uh, Black Plague 2.0. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the rats could actually infect you virtually with little flying robots of death. They just got little spray canisters. Yeah. It comes up to you and you're like, oh, that's so cute. It sprays black plague. Black plague. Like, ah, suck it, bitches. <laughs> Says that. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, what? Uh, who, is, who is behind this? Hey, really? Rat brains, really? Google, why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th this is pretty fantastic. Uh, worth checking out the video. I was very blown away by this. It's the yeah. future of location. You mean like you put that in another device that it's off to? No, oh, definitely. Um, this is a cool little random story I found today. Um, there is this, I think it might just be a one one man show type thing, or maybe a group, I don't know. Um, it's a naked <laughs> man on your screen right now. A shirtless man holding it up. He's very built. Yeah, well, when, when he puts his when he puts his strap on, because he literally he he's like it's like step one, like install the biosensors, which is essentially like a thing he puts around the head well, and install your. And the very the first thing he does, he like he puts the one of the things on his left nipple, and I'm like, what the hell is he gonna put the other one? In? And then he like yeah, he puts it further down. So they they measure like your um like heart rate and um, I guess just general sort of. It must just be like electrical activity and stuff, heart activity, mm. and. Something else. Maybe that's all it is. But anyway, then it um it sends it wirelessly uh, via Bluetooth back to your phone, and they've got uh, it's through Android, of course. <laughs> subtle, <laughs> very <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Look, what Android is just doing all the cool stuff's coming out on Android lately. <laughs> um, so yeah, it comes back through this app, and you can just see your you know your heartbeat and all your different conditions, and it can record that and keep it as a a massive thing. So um, I mean, then it's just a matter of like upping that and saying you know getting other little attachments, biosensors that can measure like blood glucose level, that can measure, you know, brain activity, if we get to that level. Um, I'm going further, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really cool. I, and especially like things like, you're already seeing those sleep monitor apps that we mentioned. Mm, yeah. Well, well, I was well. using one actually before I just jailbroke my iPhone and I used one of the things that... <gasps> Isn't that illegal? Nope. That's they illegal. ruled it wasn't illegal in the States. Not sure okay. about Australia, but... Cool. Yeah, so it's, yeah, um, it's kind of cool. And then uh, their final sentence is like, imagine a world where everyone has such a device installed at birth. Imagine a world where someone behind a computer, some kind of world controller, knows when you're lying, when you're having sex, when you're feeling suicidal. Yeah, because we have trends towards that right now. Like, you know, it's not yeah, it's people want to share it to gain stuff. It's an AOL site. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're a news very, tablet. very thick when it comes towards yeah. saying how that'll work. Man, that, that's cool. That's like biosensors that are already, like today, now, uh, you know, merging with your phone. Like just putting in it, yeah. Well, it's 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 got to be, that's always been the massive part of the phone. Like, when they say, what's the use of the phone rather than saying games and, like, little silly things, it's always health. Health, you can do such fantastic well, things. You it, can monitor it. It's, it's almost your like computer. It's your, yeah, it's your computer. This is permanently attached to you. Yeah. It's permanently connected to you. Like, uh, di diabetes and all that. Like, if you're a diabetic, uh, like, uh, yeah. a, a roommate of ours who used to, who used to be a roommate, um, uh, used to have this little machine attached to him. Like, why not have that Stop. attached to your phone? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you've got this thing just going in, just wirelessly communicated that way. I mean, rather than having all these little things together, merge them all together, know your health. Know and, and what Google Health's trying to do, like, you, your doctor can access all that oh, data. yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like, like latitude, you, rather than yeah. latitude tracking where you are, track your heartbeat at all times, track your um, pressure at all times, track 
I don't know much about human. And then we can do it. Then we can go to a Chinese model where you pay your doctor to keep you healthy. Yeah. Like essentially, you pay your doctor a monthly fee. They they just go on every month or so, check yeah. out your vitals, and say, "Hey, you're in good shape," or "Hey, mm, you should do this. Maybe you should come I'd, in." I'd like this. for it to be paid by the state. I I, I like the Australian way. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but just the idea that you know preventative medicine rather than yeah yeah that's it rather than going the through and say, um, "Yeah, maybe you should come in. You've been uh, you've got a little bit of a weird heart yeah. palpitation." It predicts that hey, something might be wrong rather than oh my god, you're about to die. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Good luck wow. with that. Wow. Yeah. Which is the last one? Uh, the last one, which leads into the singularity topic, is this lovely little teddy, teddy bear. And I really liked it. I thought it was great. It's by Fujitsu. They've created this cute little teddy bear. And uh, it's really awesome because it can detect... It's got a little camera in its nose. Oh, it, it, do, it does look very scary, I will admit, especially when it responds and squeaks and stuff. But the actual like movements and all that are great. Like It detects where you are. It can like wave back to you. Wave it and it waves back. Scratch its belly, it does all of that. It's it's really like a super upgraded Furby. Like, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And it like goes to sleep when you're not around. It wakes up when you're there. Like they're talking about promoting it to people in like old folks' homes and all of that. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but uh, apparently anyway. it feels pain. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> I'm sure you could install a torture sensor if you were so inclined, but <laughs> poor bear. Uh, <laughs> what you could do is just have it like sitting in your room. Like when you come back in, it's just like, hey, how are you? And then it goes back <laughs> and responds and you can say hi to your bear and all of that. You have to check out the video. It's really cool. I, I like this bear a lot. I think it's great. And you record all that data back to a central yeah. server and someone monitors it and <laughs> they can work it. It's like the, the bear in weeds with the camera in it. Yes, yeah, yeah, true. Her children. Well, yeah, it does have yeah. a camera in the nose, I guess, so maybe it could actually do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very cute bear and it's a very great way of doing it. I'm, I'm, yeah, it I'm a cool big idea. fan. Big fan. Which, uh, 